Hey, it's Deborah Peters. Welcome back. Tuesday afternoon for the Deborah Peters Show, your lunchtime mind hack. And today's episode is a doozy. Do you have a poverty fetish? That's our conversation today. And I'm very much looking forward to digging in and having this dialogue with you. So it has been a really busy <laughs> last uh, 48 hours, not even 24 and counting. Um, absolutely enjoying this process that I'm in. I'm experiencing all sorts of shifts and changes and like total creative moments. I, I can't walk down the street and not come up with like at least 10 things that I want to put into play immediately. So I'm on my phone and I'm recording stuff and typing stuff into my calendar so I can remember it all and then coming back to the office and getting everything rolling. And uh, I have more to share with you about that because the creative process, when you let it out, can turn into gold and platinum and all sorts of goodies. So let me just pause right here. I want to say hi to everybody. Um, hello to Yannick and to Travis. Hi, it's good to see you. And Thomas and Art, good to see you here. And Kevdet, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, now what you got going on here, Mo? He's talking about all sorts of film production in Jordan. Well, I'm so glad to have you join us. And um, so I have a lot of really cool things happening. And uh, before I get into today's show, which is all about looking at your mindset around poverty, I have some really good stuff for you about that. I'd like to share with you some of the things that I am working on. Now, I've got something that's percolating that I can't say too much about, but I'm gonna plant a seed here, especially for those of you that are living in different countries. And for, for anybody that's in business, what I've discovered from coaching companies all over the world is that usually the business leader uh, can always benefit from having some sort of an advisory board to bounce right to bounce ideas off of to to get feedback to to receive the wisdom of other business leaders that have been through the trenches and have experienced setbacks and know what it's like to take a hit you know to take a negative hit or two or three and that's kind of sort of where i come from with my coaching is everything that I work with clients on, I've been through. So it's not theoretical. You know, of course I've done my training and gone out there and learned tools and taken courses and I always will. I never stop learning. I'm always consistently up leveling. You know, we have an infinite mind. So let's just keep expanding it. That's my, that's my motto. Um, but most importantly, everything that I work with clients about comes from a place of my own process, you know, where I have bootstrapped everything I have, I've created everything from scratch, and I've developed me beyond limited views, limited points of view. Hi, Jimmy and Maurice. Nice to have you join us. You guys are right on time today, too. It's like chop, chop, right? We're starting right at 1230. Um, and so in the process of that, you know, I've, I've taken a few hits, taken a few negative hits, and um, pulled myself back from the deep, dark depths of despair. <laughs> so that sounds melodramatic. Um, but it's true. It's true. I've, I've like, I've gone through a lot and I've reinvented myself many times over and I continue to reinvent myself. And, and I just have cultivated this really deep appreciation for the life that we live and, and the blessings that we have that we surround ourselves with in terms of people and, you know, nature. Oh my God. I was just outside for a, a bit of a walk while I was preparing for this show and, it's just, we're just so blessed, you know, the birds chirping and the blue sky and 
you know, even if you're in super cold weather, there's still something to be to be grateful for. Hi, Ed, um, Robert. Nice to see you. So today's show, and Antonio, nice to have you join us. Um, so today's show is: Do you have a poverty fetish? I have. Um, I just did a mastermind on Saturday, and I had a, a nice group of people come, and we spent the whole day. I actually did it in my in my loft in Los Angeles, and and you know we got around. I've got this big, beautiful glass dining room table, and we got around the dining room table, and and we worked for a day, and I walked them through a process of up leveling their mindset and really tuning in to the energy that is you. You know, when you get to know you truly, and I'm not talking about the the parts of you that have been programmed by other people to have limiting points of view. I'm talking about the you that is unstoppable, the you that is infinite, the you that is amazing, the greatness that is you. That's what I'm talking about. And so we spent the day and I, I taught them how to tune into that part of themselves. Wouldn't you love to have access to that every single day and to be able to build your business from that place? How does it get better than that, right? So we did that on Saturday and something that came out of that process was the topic for this show. Hi, Giuseppe, nice to see you. And Moshe, nice to see you too. Um, this idea that we live in a world of lack is really, in my opinion, a media perpetuated lie. Now, I'm not saying the media invented it, so I'm not gonna blame them for everything, because I really think that it's something that permeates our entire society. and. Um, I want to talk about that today, and I want to share some of the insights on that that I have had of late. So the idea that we might have a poverty fetish might actually be the problem, you know? That might actually be the poverty right there. That might actually be the choke point that keeps you from moving forward in your business. So let me pull up my notes here, because... Um after I got back from my walk, I started writing this out so I could, I could take you, because I have a tendency to have, when I'm doing this, what happens is I have the thought that I'm on, and then I have, it's like if you've ever um, sat in your car in a flight path for a major airport, where you can watch the planes starting to roll in and you can just sort of see them jockeying for position, you know, who's landing on which landing strip where, and obviously air traffic control has that all handled. But when you're on the ground and you're in your car, especially at night when the planes have their lights on and you can see the, you can tell the sizes of the planes by the, the span of the lights. And it's just a really fascinating um, metaphor that I, I think really is a good way for me to describe to you how my mind works, like how my brain fires, because it never shuts off. Like I'm a 24 seven, I'm coming, I'm like, you know, the mad scientist coming up with stuff all the time. So that's how it works for me. Like I can be saying these words to you right now. And then my, the rest of my, um, being is on the topic for today and I have all of this like trails of thought coming at me as to what to say to you and what to share with you and in doing that it all wants to come through at one time and so that's not possible and I have a tendency sometimes I, I think you know, in retrospect, after each show, I think I, I what I do is I look back on it and I go, oh dear, I jumped around uh, too much trying to say, trying to deliver too many um, points of view or concepts to you. And maybe I didn't actually get into each one deeply enough for you to find the value in it. Hi, Marco. Nice to see you. Great chatting with you this morning, by the way. Morning, my time. 
evening in Portugal, or afternoon in Portugal. And um, Adu, nice to have you. So um, with that said, I made some notes about today's show that I want to just kind of go through. And first of all, number one step is I want to unpack the title. So first of all, what is a poverty fetish? You know, isn't that an interesting concept? Actually, I actually had a friend of mine say to me, well, I've never really heard those two terms used together. So um, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear what you have to say about that. And I do want to give credit to one of my clients that was in the mastermind that we did on Saturday. He's a business attorney. His name is Hans. If you, if you want to work with Hans, you just reach out to me and I'll connect you. The guy is brilliant. He's been through quite a few of my programs and we continue to up level his law practice every time he comes through. And he's actually the one that used the term poverty fetish. And I said, Hey, I love that. Can I use that? And he's like, yeah, totally. So um, let me just say this about that. So first of all, let's break down the concept of poverty fetish. All right. So first of all, poverty, what is poverty? Well, poverty is any thought, any emotion, any energy that you might entertain in your self-talk or in your dialogues with other people or in your um, points of view that are based in lack, limitation, um, loss, limited supply, lack of time, aging, uh, any restriction of any sort, uh, poor health, illness, uh, doubt of any sort, um, being lonely, feeling alone, feeling less than, unworthiness, low self-esteem, um, what else? Uh, so it's really before it's about not having enough money or not having enough resources. It's about the energy that you run in your thought programs first off. Okay. Or your emotional processes or your, um, spiritual connection, like this idea that you're alone. And so first of all, that's, that's a poverty consciousness or a scarcity consciousness. It's anything that's steeped in this idea that there's a limited supply, that there's a lack, that there's even, even loss of any kind, you know, we, um, I'm going to pin your comment, Marco. We normally said that we are, <laughs> always with ideas. Yeah. So, um, the thing is, is that we live in this society and you know, that's such a broad term, right? A society, what's a society? It's like where we are or where we circle ourselves or where we hang out or, or where we resonate, you know, that's our society. But, but let's just say from a generalized point of discussion, like a generalized point of view, a society is, something that is a collective of all of us that has attached itself to certain belief systems, certain programs, certain conditioning, um, points of view, world views, models of the world, right? These are all like bigger, grander concepts of who we are being. And it reflects back to us essentially who we're being, but it becomes such a real thing that as it reflects itself back to us, we actually believe that it's real. And we believe that it's real to the extent that it's something outside of us that we don't have any power over. And then that creates this sense of being a victim. So the idea that there's a, um, a poverty consciousness that kind of permeates the teachings, the beliefs, the thinking of the society that we're in sort of begins to make us feel like it's something beyond our control, that it's not actually something that we can change or, or, or modify, um, and that we just sort of have to adjust to and accept and, um, you know, again, it just brings up that whole sense of poverty and, and, and victim, right? 
that we were powerless and nothing is further from the truth. But let me, let me carry on. Let me carry on. So then the idea of a fetish. Okay. So what's a fetish? Um, so a fetish is a, this is, this is, I made this up today. So I don't think you're going to find this if you go like look it up in Webster, all right, or Wikipedia. This is a Deborah Peters ism right here. So, what is a fetish? So, a fetish in this case is a hybrid addictive chemistry or chemicals, chemical compounds in your body, in your brain, in your mind. And it, it like, um, attracts to it. Let me back up. So, so a hybrid addictive chemical compound based in a secondary gain. Okay. So what's a secondary gain? Hi, Catherine. Wow. Nice to see you. I haven't talked to you in like a decade. And Jennifer, don't you just love social media? It's just so grand. Um, so it's based in a secondary game. What's a secondary game? So let me unpack that. So a secondary gain is when we do something or think something or feel something that actually contributes to something else. So that's the secondary gain. So we would gain something from that secondary thing. So for example, hi Saeed, nice to see you. Um, let's say, uh, someone is self-destructive in some fashion, like, they have an idea, but then they sabotage it. Well, usually that's based on a secondary game. They'll sabotage the idea because um, maybe when they were children, they were programmed to believe that they weren't worthy of wealth or ease or love or whatever, right? So that secondary game then would be to sabotage the opportunity now to feed into that old belief system. Right, so that's the secondary gain. So now we have a poverty fetish. So the poverty is anything to do with an, a concept of lack, like there's not enough to go around, that there's a limited pie, and you have to fight and compete and push and grind to get your like little piece of that pie, right? And then the fetish is that you're doing that because it feeds some secondary gain. And the secondary gain is typically a program that you were taught as a kid that you might not even be aware of. You're just doing it unconsciously. It's like the blind spot. It's like the thing that's keeping you from breaking free of any constraints or limitations, right? So, um, this is why we believe that it's hard to change a habit. It's where the saying, um, uh, bad habits die hard or change is difficult. You know, these crazy things that we say to ourselves because we don't have the tools to actually bust through that old mindset or that old thought process or, or, you know, that I used to have my mother's voice in my head and I couldn't stop it. It was loud and it was shrill and it was always going whenever I'd step forward and start to build and create and receive something wonderful. I would have this limiting conversation in my mind that was with my mother and it wasn't even her fault. You know, it was just, it had got in there. And then I had played it so many times that it actually became an algorithm. And then it was had a life of its own, you know, it was running all by itself. And I didn't even have to put any effort into making it run. But I had to put a lot of effort into unwinding it and getting rid of it. 
Hence why I'm giving you these tools so you don't have to go through that process. I want you to be able to, you know, leapfrog into the next level of, of creation in your life, right? Um, hey, Sheldon, nice to see you. So this whole idea that habits die hard and it's hard to change a habit, none of that is true either. That's just something we say to ourselves because we, we don't realize that habits are just repetitive thinking that then become chemical compounds in our brain and in our mind and in our bodies that in and of themselves become addictive by nature. You know, we, we think that basically what happens is we think the same thoughts over and over and over and over and over, but we think we're thinking new thoughts that are pertaining to different things, but really, we're really not, we're really not. And that's why the needle doesn't move on our business growth the way we would like it to. So, um, so yeah, our societal function, let me talk a little bit more about that. When it comes to money, so this is where I think there's a poverty fetish on the planet. And, you know, I want to, I want to just give a caveat and say, look, I am all for people achieving and creating wealth. I think that and I know that as each person steps forward in their existence and creates and allows themselves to receive higher levels of wealth and that that is tangible money as much as it's love and and vibrant health and energy and all of that it's also it's also tangible money because it's it's a creation and when we take the stigma off of what money is in a lot of people's minds that it's evil it's dirty it's bad it's illegal it's you know for the elite like all of that crazy self-talk that's not true because you just adopted it from somebody else right um if we take i just want to say that it's good to, to become wealthy and, and not from taking away from the possibility of others. I believe that everything that we do is should really increase choice in others. So anytime you're in relationship with someone else from love to business, it's does your presence in their life increase choice? for both of you, because if it does, then you've got something. If it takes away from them, then you're out of alignment, right? You're not, you're not in, in alignment with your spirit and your heart and your mind. So the problem that we are facing is that in society, this quest, this drive, this infatuation with wealth, with bling, with amassing tons of money, most of the time, many times, many times, I'm going to say it that way, many times comes from a away from driver, meaning I'm going to go make more money so I don't suffer in poverty. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because what we focus on always expands. So as we're creating more in our lives, money, prosperity, abundance, etc., if we're coming from a place of fear of poverty, then we actually cultivate this poverty fetish. And it's not really about wealth anymore. It's more about poverty than it is anything else, you know? Um, I used to be a couples coach. I was a couples coach for about 10 years. And my goodness, you know, a lot of people were married just so they didn't have to be alone. Well, remember what I said in the beginning of this show, that poverty is about lack of anything. If, if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling lonely, that's poverty consciousness right there. And we can become addicted to these feelings and these thoughts 
and not even understand that we've become addicted to them and that we perpetuate them by thinking them. It's just like any addict, right? So addictions aren't about external things, you know? In, in this world, we label addictions as being, okay, are you a sex addict? Um, are you a drug addict? Are you, are you an alcoholic? Are you, you know, addicted to food, like addicted to work? You know, what's your addiction? Addicted to exercise? Um, but, but you're really not addicted to this external thing. That's just a symptom you're really running addictive chemicals through your thoughts and your emotions that are then causing you to seek out the external um, expression of the addiction. So you could take, and, and you know, this happens with a lot of, um, ooh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and just take a risk. This happens with 12-step programs, where many times, I'm not gonna say always, but many times, the addiction to the drugs or the alcohol gets transferred over to being addicted to coffee, being addicted to sugar, being addicted to religion. You know, it's just a transfer of the addictive behavior that's going on chemically inside the human being. And so what I'm suggesting to you is that you really get in touch with, and then I'm going to cut this off because I promise 30 minutes. Okay. I promise. Just give me four more minutes and then I'll wrap this up. Actually three minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> so, you know, we get this like um, addiction to these chemistries in our body and they take on a life of their own. So what are you gonna do to shift that? And you know, it's probably what you're waiting for, right? Well, okay, so how do I get rid of that? What do I do? Um, you focus on something else. And I know that sounds really elementary, but let me share this with you. So back in the day, I used to do these personal breakthrough sessions with people and they were like a 24 to 34 hour process where I would literally rewire their entire neurology for love, for money, for health, for, for whatever. And I would just like find every limiting belief and every negative emotion and I would delete it from their neurological process and then I would install these new patterns. And the problem with deleting is that there's there's no end to how much negative programming you can find it's a nucleated sphere it's a bottomless pit it's a black hole and that's because we live in this environment that makes its money off of sensationalizing sad and tragic stories to get us to feel victim and to feel powerless so we never take charge of our reality and at some level we're always giving up we're always rolling over we're always feeling and behaving like having a magnificent life is for somebody else and so the only way to really create an expansive, infinite, exponential life is to put in new patterns of thinking, to spend time with new people, to spend time alone, to walk in nature, to meditate, to discipline your own thinking, your own behavior, the food you eat, the people you hang out with, the thoughts you think, every little thing that goes into your mind, body, and spirit, you have to take charge of. And you build up one step at a time, powerful thoughts, powerful emotions, and an alignment with your inner being that brings you back to a knowingness 
that absolutely no one, no one can have any influence over, no matter if they laid out all of the evidence in front of you and said, look, this is the truth. But when you know in your heart of hearts who you are, then nothing matters. Nothing matters in what people say to you or show you, right? I want to just close with, thank you for all that love. I want to, hi, Armin and Clement, I want to, I want to close with this. So uh, I'm working with a client right now that's, um, that's in the mortgage industry. And this is a client that at one point in time, when I first started working with her, she was doing a decent amount of volume, like 10, maybe $15 million a month in loan volume, right? So if your average loan is, you know, five or 700,000, you can do the math, how many mortgages that is. So within a year and a half, I took her to $90 million a month in loan volume. That's a personal income of $3 million plus. And I say plus because with that came the Mercedes and the flat screens and the vacations and, and, and the watches and limitless. So we recently started working together again and um, we've set a goal for in six months to hit 75 million, right? And so someone in her company, <laughs> who happens to be her boss, said, that's impossible. That'll mean in six months, you're going to be doing more production than my top rep right now that's been hitting high numbers for a long time. And hey, Brian, so um, this I texted her this last night, and this is what I want to leave you with. I told her, when someone says that to you, when someone tells you that you can't do something because somebody else is already doing the maximum, here's where you call bullshit, okay? This is what I said to her. I said, whenever someone says you can't do more volume than the top producer, here's what you say. Are you guys ready? You wanna write this down? You wanna record this? Um, you say, I don't compare myself to others. I've set my goal based on what I know I have already accomplished. I only compete with myself. When I set a goal, I achieve it. And that, my friends, is today's episode of The Deborah Peters Show. Thank you for being here. If you'd like to work with me, I have two masterminds coming up in Los Angeles on the 23rd and the 30th of March. If you're not in LA and you would like to participate, we live stream you. All right, so not a problem there. And then my Business Accelerator Bootcamp is coming up April 25th and 26th, and that's also live in Los Angeles. Beyond that, I'm also creating a global platform for business leaders to have an advisory board that you can work with that support you, you can tap into their wisdom. They understand what it takes to build something and what it, what it takes to move beyond <laughs> the ass whipping you get when you're moving through life and you're creating something phenomenal. So uh, get in touch with me. I'm launching in multiple cities over the next three and a half months and uh, would love to chat with you about that if you're interested in being a moderator. So just PM me. If you'd like to get on my mailing list, shoot me an email on um, it's Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H at N-E-I hyphen mind, M-I-N-D.com. Follow me on Instagram. It's at N-E-I for change and jump over to LinkedIn. I have some big stuff happening on LinkedIn and you can connect up with me there. And thank you. Thank you. Many blessings. Have a fabulous day. And um, go out there and kick some ass. 
let go of that poverty fetish. All right, guys. See you on Friday, 12.30 p.m. PST. Sharp. Ciao.